Hello, how's it going? In today's video, I'm covering the Dark Star, Oshagoon Mountain of Spirits, and Reclamation of Goria. So let's go! We're now around 180 years before the Dark Portal. Shatrath City is flourishing. Velen had advised his people not to settle too far outside the Stronghold, so as to not disturb the Orc and Ogre civilizations in the region. But he bloody changed his mind. As the Rangari explored Draenor, they realised the crash of the Genadar had actually caused a little bit of harm to the world. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. A mix of arcane, light and void energies had been unleashed, and it was warping the flora and fauna. Primals and Breakers emerged from their enclaves and were fighting openly with whatever they could find. Velen decided it was the Draenei's responsibility to sort this out, because they'd caused it. Artificers, Rangari and Vindicators set out and established outposts across Draenor, linked together via the world's arcane ley lines. The greatest of these new settlements was the Temple of Karabor, which was tucked away in the eastern edge of Shadowmoon Valley. This would soon become one of the Draenei's holiest sites. Over time, using arcane and light energies, the Draenei managed to repair the damage on Draenor, the Primals and Breakers chilled their beans and buggered off back to their regions. The expansion had brought the Draenei into contact with the native races, but Velen had made it clear he expected his people to avoid conflict. He'd hoped to keep the Orcs and Ogres free of any ill effects from their arrival, but, well, I guess we can't always have what we want. The Shadowmoon Orcs had noticed Kara's remains floating about in the sky, and they immediately decided it was definitely a deity. They referred to it as the Dark Star, a few bold shaman attempted to access Kara's shadowy power, but it just ended up shattering their minds and making them mental. So the Shadow Moon clan decided, okay, new rule. It's still definitely a deity, but its power was not meant to be wielded by mortals, so leave it the balls alone. Anyone who ignored this would get a slap on the wrist, and if they did it again, they'd be exiled. Meanwhile, Kore's remains were still inside the Genadar's crystal wreckage. Just as Dor's remains had started attracting fallen Draenei, Kore seemed to be attracting dead orcs. Once the clans discovered this, Shaman would make frequent pilgrimages to speak with their ancestors. They named the mountain Oshagoon. The light energies that lingered in the Genadar would suffuse to orc spirits, making them a lot wiser than they'd ever been in life. Advice provided by these spirits very often ended up being the best advice ever, which seems nice. But the Draenei weren't big fans of this. Dor's remains were only a small part of its original form and it was emitting void energies. Kore was still fully intact, so in theory it would be emitting more void energies. They had no idea what kind of long-term effects this might have on the orcs or the world. However, they were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. If they cut the orcs off from accessing this sacred mountain, the orcs might get a little angry and go to war. But if Kore suddenly fell deeper into the void, there was no telling what the balls would happen. So the Draenei just did nothing. Don't judge them. Unfortunately, things were going to go bad for the orcs. The exiles that lost themselves to madness during their shamanic rite of passage, you know, the ones that live in caves beneath Nagrand and have skulls tattooed to their faces? They'd taken notice when the Genadar crashed, and they'd extended their tunnels beneath Oshagoon to investigate. In time, they tapped into the Void energies that bled from Kore, and then they started communing with the Void Lords. And that's not a good idea at all. The Void Lords bombarded these orcs with visions of an apocalypse, and revealed to them the secrets of shadow magic. The influx of Void energies turned the exile's skin white, and they began calling themselves the Pale. But that's it for now in terms of the effects Kore had on the orcs. In the decades that followed, some orc clans engaged in trade with the Draenei, but most kept their distance. Some orcs believed the Draenei were divine creatures, others didn't. But none of the clans saw the Draenei as a threat. The Ogres, however, well that's a different story. They'd been aware of the Draenei since the first day they arrived, and had kept a close eye on them. When they built Shatrath, the Ogres were furious. The Draenei were newcomers, and they were small and weak and crap, and yet they were bold enough to build a city on the bones of Goria. This was an insult, and also kind of embarrassing. However, Shatrath's sleek construction and otherworldly defences made the Ogres stop and think. They've got weapons we've never even seen, and their weakest apprentices seem to have mad skills, even compared to our advanced sorcerers. But then a new leader called Imperator Hoklon seized control of Hymol and said, Stop thinking about it so much, let's just bloody get them. Hoklon basically got the ogres all riled up by calling the Draenei usurpers and saying Hymol's going to be the centre of a new Gorian empire once they slaughtered the Draenei. And the ogres were like, Whee! The massive ogre army marched on Shatrath. They were full of beans because they vastly outnumbered the Draenei. This was going to be bloody easy. People will sing songs about this day for ages to come, and oh my god. The city's defences easily repelled Hymol's first attack. Before the ogres could regroup for a second, Rangarian Vindicators surprised them from multiple directions. Meanwhile, Akama led an elite force of holy warriors, including two of his greatest followers, Murad and Nabundo. They found Hoklon and his generals and killed them. But rather than completely wipe out the remaining ogres, the Draenei called off their attack and returned to Shatrath. Velen then appeared on Shatrath's ramparts and issued a single statement. Go home. And the ogres were like, yeah, all right, probably go home, innit? Yeah, good idea. And they never tried a frontal assault on the Draenei ever again. And that's one of the many reasons why I actually really like the Draenei. 
and we're leaving it there. That was fun. In the next Volume 2 video, we're going to finish the chapter. The Orcs reconsider their opinion that the Draenei aren't a threat, and we see the introduction of Orgrim and Duratan, so that's going to be cool. If you enjoyed this video, press the like button, or so you can totally subscribe if you want. And all that's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!